Number 6. Kaylee Ann Sawyer 23-year-old Kaylee Ann Sawyer, a student at the Central Oregon Community College, or COCC, called her boyfriend to pick her up just past midnight on July the 24th of 2016, after she'd attended a bachelorette party in Bend. Cameron Riemhofer, Sawyer's partner of two years, then argued with the young woman in the parking lot of their apartment complex, which was close to the college campus. Riemhofer briefly went inside the building, but upon his return, found that Sawyer was gone. It was subsequently revealed she had accepted a ride from campus security guard Edwin Lara, then in his early 30s. Investigators determined that Sawyer, who was intoxicated at the time, believed she would be safe as Lara's uniform closely resembled that of a Bend police officer. He was on duty and driving a campus security SUV complete with plexiglass separating the front and back seats and auto-locking doors. After trapping Sawyer inside the vehicle's cage, Lara drove her to a secluded area where he abused and then bludgeoned her to death. The woman's body was found days after she'd been reported missing off Highway 126 in the Dry Creek area of Redmond. A key break in the case came from Lara's wife, Isabel. The woman, who'd recently become a police officer in Bend, reported her husband had told her he'd accidentally struck Sawyer with his patrol vehicle before driving off from their home. A search of the residence produced the student's purse and shoes, as well as a blood-stained rock, later established as the murder weapon. The police also found a clump of hair and blood on Lara's work boots. By then, however, he was already in the early stages of an interstate crime spree, lasting from July the 24th to the 26th. He first carjacked and kidnapped a young woman in Salem. With her in tow, he shot a man in the abdomen at a motel in Eureka, California, after he'd refused to surrender his car. Lara walked to a nearby gas station and carjacked another vehicle, kidnapping its three occupants at gunpoint and telling them he had an urge to kill. He then dropped them off on the side of the road and drove southbound with his Oregon victim. Lara was ultimately arrested after a chase with Californian law enforcement. Following his apprehension and trial, the former campus security guard was given two life terms, one for Sawyer's murder and the other for the crime spree. Number 5. Ali Costile In July of 2019, a student at the University of Mississippi was murdered by her former lover and her body was subsequently discovered at a lakeside camp near the Oxford School. According to her friends and family, 21-year-old Ali Costile had been looking forward to her senior year. The marketing major had founded a running and a golf club and was excited about returning to them. She'd been infrequently dating classmate Brandon Thiesfeld, who was also in his early 20s. According to the evidence gathered by investigators, in mid-April, Costile had texted Thiesfeld that she might be pregnant and sent him a photo of an inconclusive pregnancy test. The man told her that becoming a father at his age would ruin his life, but Costile insisted they meet and discuss the situation. Over the next few months, however, they only talked online. On July the 12th, Thiesfeld traveled to Texas and retrieved his father's 40 caliber Glock 22. He posted a photo of the handgun on social media, captioning it, finally taking my baby back to Oxford. On July the 17th, he sent Costile a message asking to meet and, three days later, picked the young woman up from her apartment. Thiesfeld then drove her to Sardis Lake. They got out of the car and, as Costile's back was turned to him, Thiesfeld shot her a total of 12 times. The man, whom it subsequently emerged had been under the influence of alcohol and cocaine at the time of the shooting, then abandoned her to die next to a picnic table. A post-mortem and medical examination determined that Costile wasn't pregnant. Roughly 48 hours later, Thiesfeld was arrested at a Memphis gas station with the murder weapon still in his possession. He pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Number 4. Ruth George On a roll student, Ruth George was found dead in late November of 2019 in a campus parking lot belonging to the University of Illinois at Chicago, where she attended classes. George's family had reported her missing over the weekend and UIC police tracked her phone to the Holstead Street garage near the university's library. The 19-year-old's lifeless body was found in the back seat of a car belonging to her family. She had succumbed to strangulation and her death was ruled a homicide. Surveillance footage aided the authorities in identifying a suspect as 
26-year-old Donald Thurman, who lived near the campus. He was seen following the young woman into the parking garage at 1.35 a.m. and then walking south on Holstead roughly 35 minutes later. Thurman had been paroled the previous year after serving a sentence for armed robbery. 24 hours after George's death, he was apprehended by UIC detectives at a nearby train station. The parolee fully confessed to killing the teenager. It was revealed that he'd catcalled her and then grown frustrated by her lack of response. Thurman followed George into the garage and continued trying to talk to her but got no response. He then came up from behind and put the young woman in a chokehold. He dragged George in the back seat of her car, abused her, and then strangled her to death with his bare hands. In the aftermath, Thurman was formally charged with first-degree murder and aggravated assault. Number 3. Alexander Wyatt Campbell Two unarmed campus security guards were shot and killed at Bridgewater College in Virginia in February of 2022. The learning facility went into lockdown in the immediate aftermath, and officials alerted students to the presence of an active shooter on the Shenandoah Valley campus. The suspect was taken into custody nearly 40 minutes after the incident and identified as Alexander Wyatt Campbell, aged 27, a former track star at the Liberal Arts School. He'd waded through the North River and onto an island where he was apprehended. Campbell was found to have sustained a non-life-threatening gunshot wound, but officials didn't disclose if he'd been shot by officers or if it had been self-inflicted. The incident unfolded after John Painter and J.J. Jefferson, aged 55 and 48 respectively, had confronted Campbell at around 1.20 p.m. after he'd reportedly been acting suspiciously near Memorial Hall on the campus. A brief interaction followed in the course of which the former student opened fire, killing Painter and Jefferson. The inseparable pair were nicknamed the Dynamic Duo and were beloved by students, faculty and staff. Painter had actually been Jefferson's best man in his recent wedding. Campbell, who dropped out of Bridgewater in 2017, had been banned from entering the campus and had previously been charged with trespassing for not keeping his distance. He was charged with two counts of capital murder, one count of first-degree murder, and one count of using a firearm in commission of a felony. Today's topic was requested by Kayla Bell and River Parish. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Lauren McCluskey 21-year-old Lauren McCluskey was gunned down at the University of Utah campus in October of 2018 by a man with whom she had recently broken up. McCluskey, a student athlete, had graduated with honors from Pullman High School in Washington, where she was state champion in the high jump and a school record holder in the 100-meter hurdles. For about a month in the fall of 2018, she dated 37-year-old Melvin Rowland, the man, a registered offender, had spent nine years in Utah State Prison following the attempted abuse of a minor. He'd lied to McCluskey about his name, age, and criminal history. She ended their relationship on October the 9th after learning the truth about the man's past. In the days that followed, she twice complained to the authorities that Roland was harassing her and began working with a detective to build a case against him. On October the 22nd, she was talking to her mother on the phone while returning to her dormitory after a night class. McCluskey's mother heard her repeatedly shout out, no, before the phone went silent. Campus security called the police and reported a possible abduction in the parking lot outside the dormitory medical plaza. Officers arrived at the scene, searched the lot, and found McCluskey's body in a parked car. The young woman had been fatally shot by Roland. He was quickly identified as a suspect and later spotted fleeing towards Trinity AME Church. He forced his way into the church through a back door, with the police closing in on him. Roland reached the building's second floor where he ended his life via a self-inflicted gunshot. Number 1. Juan El Go On April 2nd of 2012, an armed man walked onto the campus of Oikos University, a Korean Christian college in Oakland, California. 43-year-old former student Juan El Go had been asked to leave the school a few months prior, reportedly because he had disciplinary problems. He was angry at the students who'd allegedly mistreated him and with the administration because it had denied a prorated tuition fee reversal on his payment. Undetected by the campus's security, Go had carried a 45 caliber handgun and four fully loaded 10-round magazines into a classroom. He then stood up while a nursing class was in session and ordered those present to line up against the wall 
Go opened fire on them, killing a professor and six students, ranging in ages from 21 to 53. Three others were injured and Go continued firing shots as he fled the campus. He drove off in a car belonging to one of the victims, but a few hours later, surrendered to the authorities. Go subsequently apologized for the shooting and claimed that he didn't remember much of it. A competency evaluation would determine that he was unfit to stand trial. He'd been suffering from paranoid schizophrenia for at least 10 years and couldn't cooperate with his public defender because he didn't comprehend the criminal justice system. Go was confined to a mental institution and in 2015 asked for the death penalty. Both the defense and the prosecution were unsure if the request stemmed from guilt or if Goss still suffered from delusions associated with his condition. Two years later, he pleaded no contest to the charges related to the shooting and was sentenced to seven consecutive life sentences plus 271 years in prison, all without any possibility of parole. Thanks for watching. Would you rather live for the rest of your life next to a frat house or go through high school again in your 40s? Let us know in the comments section below.